holy moly, it's Friday. It's Lunch and Learn with Dr. Polly. That's me right here in downtown Humble at Abundant Health and Wellness Clinic. So we're getting um, some sound checks just here. So I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm going to make sure I don't have lipstick on my mouth, like I, on my lips, like I did last time, right? Give people time to check in. We're going to be talking today about vegetarian and vegan diets because there are a lot of people, uh, it's all over social media and it is all over the news about this is the most healthy diet that we can have. And I'm just here to tell you that that's not necessarily so. There are a lot of pitfalls to, uh, there's a lot of pitfalls if you follow a vegetarian or a vegan diet for a long period of time. So you might be asking, what is the difference between vegan or vegetarian? Tracy, can you turn that light on for me? I'm a little dark. There you go. I'm a little dark. Um, so a vegan diet, or sorry, let's go back to vegetarian. A vegetarian diet will eat dairy and eggs, uh, whereas a vegan diet will not eat anything that is a animal product, okay? So there are a lot of uh, testimonials that are out there, and this may have happened to you too, that when you cut out grains, you cut out dairy, you cut out meat, that all of your symptoms seem to improve. And yes, you're right, it does. And the reason for that is the root problem is something called gut dysbiosis. And what that means is the GI tract, the mucosal lining that goes from your mouth down to your rear end has been damaged. It's been damaged by stress. It's been damaged by parasites. It's been damaged by viruses. It's been damaged by yeast. There are a lot of things that it could be damaged by. So what we want to do is understand that even though we feel better when we cut those things out of our diet, long term, that's not necessarily a good thing for us, okay? So there's some nutrients that are missing when you do a vegan or a vegetarian diet. Now, back to your thought, because I can just hear you. Oh, but Dr. Polly, I feel so great since I started a vegetarian diet. I feel so great since I cut these things out. Yes, you will, and I'll tell you why. Because meat, if you don't buy an organic meat source, your meat is full of antibiotics and it's full of hormones. So cutting that out of your diet, you're going to feel better because you don't have that toxic load being multiplied in your diet. If you cut out the grains, yes, you're going to feel better because you don't have the glyphosate, which is the pesticide uh, residue in there from your genetically modified organisms. And we've talked about this on other Lunch and Learn, so you might want to go back and look at those and see what those say. I see people are tuning in, but my screen is not telling me who you are, so just going to give you a shout out and say thank you so much. I know Ray is here. Um, I'm not sure else is who else is here, but I appreciate you. And as people give me little sticky notes, I'll, I'll, shout, I'll give you a shout out. If you quit taking in the dairy products, right, that's going to be something that you're going to feel better. Why? Because commercial dairy products are full of hormones and antibiotics. All of those create a toxic load, and if you have gas permeability in your um, mucosa lining, right, then you're going to have those issues. So yes, you feel better because you have cut these things out of your diet. But long term, you're going to have issues. Some of you out there are putting your whole family on these diets. And these diets are very, very dangerous for developing children because you're missing key, key nutrients. So I did some um, information. I did some uh, searching, and so this is what I found, and um, I'm not sure, uh, okay, so the, some of these resources are some books, The Gut and the Psychology Syndrome Diet, The Paleo Approach, and Breaking the Vicious Cycle. These are some books that you can read, some websites you can go to and get some really good uh, help on your nutrition. But this is what we want to say, question, this is the question. Is the vegan diet healthy, right? 
not so much, okay? Historically, right, uh, historically, this is by Dr. Weston Price. Now, if you are in the dentistry field, you'll know him because he is a very well-known dentist that had a passion for nutrition. Now, he traveled the world to find the, you know, the secrets of uh, longevity, uh, aging gracefully, all that kind of thing. And he has a book. It was called Nutrition and the Physical Degeneration, right? He traveled from Alaska to New Zealand and a lot of places in between. And he says that diets are traditional. Hi, Carrie Ann. I just saw you pop up. That diets are traditional to each culture, although depending on geography, none of them followed a meat-free diet, okay? He says that every culture follows strict dietary laws. No traditional culture ever subsisted on a vegan diet, right? And he found this particularly interesting. So some cultures, hey Lee, thanks for watching. Some cultures, he says, such as the Maasai tribe in Africa, consumed almost exclusively animal products. They ate meat, milk, and blood from their cattle. Now, I'm not going to recommend that we do that, okay? We are Christian, and the Bible is definitely saying that drinking the blood of animals is a no-no. So we're not saying that we do that. We're just saying that what happens, okay? So this is not, this culture is not following a um, vegan uh, diet, so the, um, the Maasai, right, they had profound health and they had incredible bone structure, okay? Cultures such as the Inuits, now the Inuits are the uh, Alaskan and some of the uh, Canadian, uh, Canadian, Canadian, sorry about that, uh, indigenous people, right? They did not practice animal husbandry, but they caught and ate wild fish and wild meat, right? When they had no access to the cattle or the fish, then they would eat bugs and grubs. Now, I'm not validating that we need to eat that, but what I'm saying, when we eat that, that's a protein source, right? So there was a book, and it's called The China Study, all right? It has been used to promote the idea that primary vegan cultures had better health than omnivorous cultures. However, they cherry-picked their data, right? And that this, this book has been, this study has been debunked. So you just need to look at that. Look at the book or the article, and this is by uh, Dennis Menninger, M-I-N-G-E-R. He is the author of Death by Food Pyramid, and he's got an article... Uh, called China Study Fact or Fiction. Okay, so you can look at those resources. Uh, more resources. Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Dr. Price. Nourishing Traditions. And then, of course, the China Study Fact or Fiction. And we're going to, we can list all these on the webpage so you can have that for a resource. So, vegan diets do not give you your fat soluble vitamins A and D, right? Contrary to popular belief, you cannot get vitamin A from carrots. All right? People say, I eat carrots, so I can do that. Carrots provide carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A. Animal sources, such as liver, I don't recommend eating liver either, just to tell you that. The reason I don't recommend eating liver, although it is a very good source of fat-soluble vitamins, Liver is a filter food, so it filters out all of the toxic load for the animals. I don't want to be eating the animal's toxic load. I'm just putting it out there, okay? It's very good for iron. It's very good for a lot of things, but there are better ways, in my opinion. So, um, egg yolks provide true vitamin A. So, if you are a vegan and you don't eat egg yolks, where are you getting your vitamin A? Because I know you're not eating liver, Right? I know you're not doing that. All right. Most people believe that carotene can be converted to vitamin A 
but the conversion is not a good conversion and it gives you very, very little vitamin A. Why do you need vitamin A? You need vitamin A for your eyes. You need vitamin A to prevent night blindness, okay? So, vitamin A also helps your thyroid. 80% of women suffer hypothyroid, okay? It might not be diagnosed, but if you do the basal temperature test and your temperature is consistently below 98.6, then you've got a thyroid functioning issue. Vitamin A helps with that thyroid. So if you're a vegan, you're not getting vitamin A, so your thyroid's going to uh, have a problem, okay? So when you don't have vitamin A, then, as I said, you get poor thyroid function, you get impaired digestion, and there is a lack of healthy fats in the diet. In the same way, usable vitamin D, natural vitamin D3, is only found in animal products such as pasteurized egg yolks, cod liver oil, and dairy products from grass-fed animals. So, yes, we don't want you to do the dairy products that are the commercial dairy products, but we do want you to do organic, clean dairy products so that you can get your fat-soluble vitamins. Yes, you can get vitamin D from the sun, but the vitamin D is in the, uh, when the sun is directly overhead, so that would be in uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So most of us are working, we can't get out at that time, so you need to get your vitamin D from your animal fats. You also get them from your salmon and your grass-fed butter, okay? Those are the things that you need. The myth is that we can obtain vitamin D by, from mushrooms, but that's a false myth. Mushrooms contain vitamin D2, not vitamin D3. Vitamin D2 is very poorly absorbed. Yes, Carrie, I see that you've got your benefits. Well, I'm glad, and that's fine. As I said earlier, you're going to see some benefits. But long term, if you're going to stay on that diet, then you need to be sure that you supplement with your... Uh, fat-soluble vitamins, okay? So you just need to see that. Vitamin A and vitamin D are particularly essential for immune regulation, digestion, fertility, and hormone balance, okay? So you can look at some resources. There is a book called True Vitamin A Foods that you can look at that and see. And yes, Wendy, I see your comment you. that your thyroid medication need went down, and that's mm -hmm. good. I'm glad you're thriving. Short term, you're going to see a benefit. Long term, it's going to be detrimental, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Vegan diets rely heavily on soy. Here in the United States, soy is almost 95% genetically modified, so you're going to have to search high and low to find a non-genetically modified soy product. Even if you can find that, soy products hurt your, in, your estrogen and it also hurts your thyroid. Hi Monica, thanks for tuning in with, with us today. So, uh, 10 years ago, a vegan diet equated to vegetables interspersed with soy milk, soy cheese, soy bacon, soy protein, so soy cereal and tofu, right? Now, the health problems with chronic soy consumption are becoming more mainstream. So it takes 10 years for your body to have these adverse affections, okay? Um, even so, a vegan diet often relies on moderate amounts of soy products, soy protein powders, and soy protein bars. We don't want to do soy. We, don't ask, we ask all of our women clients particularly not to do soy of any kind. Our men, uh, you don't have the estrogen issues, you still have the thyroid issues, but men can handle organic soy a lot better than women can. So the primary concern with soy products is the phytoestrogen content. Now this is gonna be in the genetically modified soy or it's gonna be in the organic soy. Phytoestrogens mimic real estrogens, causing a chain reaction of hormone imbalances. So, menopausal women, when you get your hormone imbalances, uh, 
men of the same age that are having estro uh, erectile dysfunction, right? It's because of the phytoestrogens in the soy that you're eating, which is causing your testosterone to turn into wimpy testosterone, which is causing you to be missing in your manhood, so to speak. So we don't, we don't for that reason, we don't recommend soy, okay? I know it's very controversial. People don't want to believe that, and that's fine. It's a free country. You can do what you like to do. But I'm just giving you this information so that you can have all of the facts, okay? Um, people say that they don't want to eat eggs because they have heard that eggs will um, increase uh, high cholesterol. Well, that is something that came out in the news in the 70s. I think it was in the 70s, and that has been debunked. Your egg is a perfect protein. It does a lot for you. If you get the free-range eggs, organic eggs, chickens that are fed with organic feed, you're going to get the best egg that you can have. Eggs have sulfur. Sulfur is good for your bones. Sulfur is good for your skin. Sulfur is good for your immune system. There are a lot of other nutrients in the egg. So we definitely want to do eggs. We like to recommend that you do at least two eggs a day. Um, if you don't want to do them every day, a minimum three times a week, okay, because you need all of the nutrients in your eggs. So, um, a lot of your baby formulas, okay, a lot of your baby formulas are made with soy. So young moms who are watching this that are uh, not able to breastfeed for whatever reason, if you look at your formula, you want to see if it is formulated with soy, okay. Infants that consume soy products had concentrations of blood level estrogen 13,000 to 22,000 times higher than normal. So what happens when our estrogen gets out of control, right? Then we are susceptible to mood swings, but we're also susceptible to cancers that need a lot of estrogen. They have that estrogen binding. So we want to just make sure that that's not something that we have a problem with. Vegan diets do not provide vitamin K2. Now, you need vitamin K2 in order for your vitamin D to work. Vitamin K2 shuttles calcium to your bones. You can eat as much calcium as you want, but it won't strengthen your bones unless it's coupled with vitamin K2. There is uh, studies that show that calcium sup supplementation has been shown to increase the risk of plaque because there's no vitamin K2 in the diet. So this is one of the reasons that we use practitioner-only products. Practitioner-only products have the cofactor. So like our vitamin D has vitamin K2 in it. So we're not ever going to give you a vitamin D supplement that doesn't have vitamin K2 in it. Our calcium supplements have the uh, cofactors in there. So your manganese, your magnesium, your boron, your zinc, all of those cofactors that are in there, it helps metabolize the calcium the way it needs to. If you don't have those cofactors, all you're doing is you're going to get calcium stuck in the bones and you're going to get arthritis and that kind of thing. So that's very, very important. So um, unlike vitamin K1, plants do not provide vitamin K2. The only exception to this rule is natto, which is a fermented soy product. So if you're vegan and you eat that, then you're going to get your K2, but you're also going to get your phytoestrogen issue. So you're going to have to weigh up the risk versus benefit. All right? Um, vitamin K2 is found in your fat sources. So you get them in your egg yolks. You get them in your cheese from your grass-fed animals. You get them in your liver. You get them in your beef and in your chicken. So you're not going to get vitamin K2 if you are on a strictly vegetarian diet. Okay, so that's very, very important. Um, real food versus fake food, okay? So you can get... 
uh, vegetarian cheese, you can get vegetarian milk, and you can get vegetarian meat. But you're not getting real food, you're getting fake food, okay? You've got synthesizers, stabilizers, gums, and thickeners, right? You're not getting a real food product. So some of you may, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you may be eating something called Earth Balance. It is a non-dairy butter, okay? How do you make non-dairy butter? Well, you make it with palm fruit oil, which is genetically modified, canola oil, which is genetically modified, safflower oil, genetically modified, flax oil, olive oil, salt, natural flavoring. Who knows what that means? That could be, you know, beaver butt extract. You just never know, okay? That's a real thing. That is a real thing. Y'all are laughing. Your, your berry flavors, right? Your raspberry, your raspberry and your strawberry, quote unquote, natural flavors, right? That comes from beaver butt extract. Google it. Y'all are laughing. Google it, okay? Also, pea protein, all right? Sunflower lecithin. Now, that could be a good, that could be a really good resource. Lactic acid, and then there's some kind of color, right? So, none of that is an animal product, and real cheese and real butter and real milk are animal products. So you don't want to be eating fake food. So I don't understand the logic of why we would not eat meat, but we would eat a lot of fake food. That just doesn't make sense because we're a holistic practice and we want to eat food as close to the way God created it as possible. So in real butter, the ingredients are what? Butter. <laughs> I mean, you take the cream, you churn the cream, you probably add a little bit of salt to it. There's no fake food in that, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me, vegan diet is not the answer to autoimmune disease, okay? Autoimmunity is a 21st century epidemic with 50 million people suffering with autoimmune disease in America. You can address autoimmunity with diet, okay? So, all diseases begin in the gut. All diseases must be addressed by improving your gut health. In the cases of autoimmunity, the intestines are permeable. We talked about that earlier. Bacterial toxins and undigested proteins cause a problem with the immune response. Now, we're going to add on this uh, video, Tracy, you can add that, the ripple effect, we did that graphic, and you'll see when the gut is not right that you're going to have all of these diseases. Some of them are acute diseases, that means they just happen, they go away, they come, they go away. You can have chronic diseases, your chronic diseases are things that you've been dealing with a long, long time, so that would be high blood pressure, that would be diabetic, that would be a lot of different things. And then you move further from that into your autoimmune disease. So when we heal the gut, then we do better, okay, we have to get that fixed. So. We need to look at these two authors who are very, very good authors. One is Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, three, three names, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride and Sarah Ballantine. They both agree that for good health, animal products are non-negotiable. It is an essential part of your gut integrity. So, I know y'all don't want to hear that, but I'm just here to tell you the truth. I'm not here to have an argument with you. I just am here to kind of give some light on what's going on in social media. All right? So, uh, let me see. There's another deficiency. So, your B12 deficiency. So, what is B12? B12 is a nutrient that you need to complete the Krebs cycle in every cell. Now the Krebs cycle is the work 
cycle of the cell. If you are eating a primary vegetarian diet, you're not going to be able to have your B12. You're going to have to supplement. You get your B12 from what? Your red meat or your egg yolks, right? So if you're doing a vegan diet, you're not getting that. And if you're uh, not getting that, then at the cell, your cell is not going to complete the work cycle. So what is going to happen? You're going to have DNA that mutates, right? So you don't want to do that. You're messing with your health on a long-term uh, uh, basis. So studies reveal, all right, that... 68% of vegetarians and 83% of vegans are B12 deficient. Omnivores, those are people, and I, I, I mean, I'm a, a red meat girl. I'm just telling you, I'm a red meat girl. Um, omnivores, those are people that eat meat. Only 5% of that population is B12 deficient. So, personally, I don't want to be deficient in any nutrients. I mean, what we do with our testing, what we do here in the clinic is to make sure that we're getting all of the nutrients that we need. So with your B12, which is essential to anti-aging, it's essential to your DNA integrity, you're not getting that in your vegan diet, right? So if you don't have your B12, these are some of the symptoms that you can have. You can have fatigue, lethargy, weakness, memory loss, neurological and psychiatric problems, anemia, and much worse. The effects of B12 on kids is alarming. Kids that are raised, children that are raised on a vegan diet until the age six are still B12 deficient for years after adding B12 to the diet. So really, moms, I know you think you're doing the right thing, but do your research. These scientists are doing the research. I'm just reporting. We don't want our babies. I've got little grandbabies. I don't want my grandbabies growing up with vitamin B12 deficiency, okay? There is a significant correlation with B12 to performance on tests measuring fluid intelligence, spatial ability, and short-term memory. So all the teachers out there, B12 deficiency hampers your fluid memory. What is fluid memory? That's being able to track and to change tracks. We're not just stuck, we're not just static, right? Spatial ability is the ability to uh, in your mind's eye, be able to see spaces. It's being able to order and that kind of thing. So your spatial ability is hampered when you don't have your B12, right? Kids score lower on short-term memory tests when the B12 is missing. So we need to uh, understand that. Fluid intelligence involves the capacity to solve complex problems, two-step problems, abstract thinking ability, and the ability to learn. So people that are having learning deficits, right, they do need to clean up their diet. But going on a vegan diet, you're missing the very, very integral component of B12, okay? There's a common myth among vegetarians and vegans that you can get B12 from plant sources such as seaweed, fermented soy, spirulina, or brewer's yeast, okay? The plant foods said to contain B12 actually contain B12 analogs, right, that actually block the intake of the real vitamin B12. So do your research. There's a lot of information out there that is misinformation. Your calcium, hey, how are you? This is a live program. We have people coming into the clinic. So on paper, calcium intake is almost the same as an omnivore's calcium intake. But it is much lower in the vegans because they're not having their dairy products. However, your calcium bioavailability, right, is hampered 
when you do not have the K2, which is what you need from your plant sources, right? So you've got to just do some math here. So one study says that 16 servings of spinach is the same amount of absorbable calcium in an 8-ounce glass of milk. Okay, so that would be 33 cups of baby spinach or 5 to 6 <laughs> cups of cooked spinach. Do we yeah, eat say, 5 to 6 cups of spinach? I don't, okay? I had a big spinach salad last night, right? It was not near 33 cups at all, okay? So you need to think about that. Um, so lots of things to cover. My time is up. Don't want to fight with you about what you're eating. If you're going to stick with a vegetarian diet, if you're going to stick with a vegan diet, you need to supplement with your fat-soluble vitamins. You need to supplement with your vitamin B12, okay? So I want you guys to have a great weekend and keep your questions coming. Love you all, and I'll see you next week.